know, there's a lot of things that um, that that happens in the in the world that we live in today that uh, we better get back on our knees, folks, and get back in the Word and seeking. You know, there's a word there, seeking. How many remember seeking the Lord? Seek the Lord until He may be found. Sometimes I think before we find Him, we give up. Amen. Let's seek Him until we find Him. Let's, let's trust what God's Word declares and get, you know, a lot of times that what happens is that we get away from the basic foundational truths of God's Word. I'm going to tell you something. If you take one thing out of God's Word or out of salvation, and that word is love, you can't build anything in this church without that one word. You can't build anything without it. Because everything that God has done for His people has been done because He loves you and me. Because He loves you and me. God for that love. Thank God for that love. You know, we was talking about it in Sunday school, talking about the love of God, but I, you know, I don't think sometimes we con we have the concept of, of, of what true love is. An agape love, a, an unconditional love that, you know what, I'm gonna love you no matter what you do to me. Because that's the type that God has. <clears throat> God sent his son to go to the cross. He sent Jesus to go to the cross for the sins of the world today. And that love, that's the whole foundation. That agape love that no matter what they did at Him that day, no matter when they pulled His beard out by uh, plucking it out, when they took and put the crown of thorns upon His head, when they took and He had to go through the suffering that He had to go through to go to the cross. When we see all that He did just for us because He loves us and He cares for us and He, and he wants His very best inside of us. And that's what He's given us. Now whenever we've invited Jesus to come into our heart. The plan of salvation. The plan of God. Now He desires to do something deeper inside of this church. Well, can I tell you this? We can't build up till we build first down and then out. We've got to prepare the foundation and we've got to prepare the structure before we can go any higher. Before we can go any more. Because we've got to count the cost and we've got to make sure that what we're building upon is not the precepts of man, but what we're building upon is the precepts of God. It's God's Word spoken over our life and now we become alive in that Word. Mm. Lord, let that Word leap in me again. Somebody know what I'm talking about? Let that Word leap in me again. When I hear that Word, all of a sudden, there's a leaping in my spirit. That's the Holy Spirit leaping inside of you. When the Word of God is heard through this audible vessel here, when the Word of God is heard, all of a sudden, the Holy Spirit that is inside of you begins to leap with joy. How many knows that we should experience that from the Lord daily? Talking with Him daily. Communing with Him daily. So now, He's trying to get us in a place where we're paying attention. Thank the Lord for His goodness and His mercy. Amen? Amen. Because sometimes I don't, have, I don't really pay attention the way I'm supposed to. But that's okay. Because He's teaching us to hear His voice. He's teaching us to hear His voice because we're His sheep and we'll not hear someone else's voice because we'll only listen to our shepherd who is our shepherd. Jesus is our shepherd. 
He's calling us. Just follow. Just follow. He's leading us. He's guiding us. He's directing our pathway. And He's setting us up. He's setting us up for something extraordinary, supernatural. But I got to learn that if I'm going to walk in it, I'm going to have to believe what I'm walking in. I'm going to have to do more than just listen to sermons on Sundays and Wednesdays and Sunday nights. I'm going to do more than just listen to Christian television or Christian radio. I'm going to have to make a commitment to the Lord myself and invest in Him myself. I, I was wanting to uh, preach about a message uh, that we started a couple of weeks back about being an encourager and being an anointer. Our church is desperate for anointers and encouragers. Yes. Amen? Amen? That's people that's going to say, no matter what you tell them, it's okay, God's got this. Yeah. No matter how long the story and how negative it may be, that's all right. God's got this. We, we got to start taking and making our narrative, folks. Amen? To make our narrative. To make. You know, listen. I know there's more to this Word than what I've experienced in this life. I know there is. There's no doubt in my mind. I've experienced more than I have in the past. But I know God's got more in store, more plan for me. And I know He's got more plan for this church. And whenever we rise up and we learn how to be encouragers and anointers, and I'll probably deal with this just a little bit. I just want to share this one part with you. You can't be an anointer or an encourager unless you've been in the bottom of the barrel and you had to be encouraged and you had to be anointed to get you out of that place. Amen? Amen. But that's alright because I'm out of that place now. Amen. That's alright because God is going to do what He said He'll do. Right. I got to start holding the narrative. When you're holding, you know, I don't know if any of you seen, and I know this is some crazy stuff that the world gets into, but they have these sticks that you go to these meetings and you can't talk unless you have a stick. And then they let you talk at this meeting. So everybody's passing, everybody's passing around sticks. Amen. Amen. So now in church, I'm going to get a stick that if I want somebody to talk, I'll throw it at you. Amen. Let me tell you something. Sometimes I got something to say without the stick. I got to change the narrative. I got to stop letting the devil dictate who I am. I got to stop letting the enemy tell me what God can and cannot do. Well, stick around, devil. I really don't know how much he can do, but we're about to find out. Change that narrative. Change that narrative. When you feel like getting in, in a place where you're by yourself and you want to get there because you want to have a party by yourself of pity. And you get over there and you have that pity party. You know who, there's, who is there with you? Saved you. And He's done His job because He has isolated you from your friends. He has isolated you from your church. He has isolated you from your God. Change the narrative. Change the narrative. And if it's not the narrative it's supposed to be, and I think Sister Rona said this the other Sunday night, you know, 
that's whenever you're you you become a a, a thermostat instead of a thermometer, which means I'm not going to be happy with the thermos with with the temperature of this room. I want to see that this is a godly room. Amen. Amen. I want to make sure this is a godly room. I want to make sure that I'm prepared, that I'm ready to to walk in 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 God's blessings and His presence. And each one of us has a responsibility that we keep that passion and that compassion in our heart for what God is going to do in these last days. If you can't be passionate about something, you're not going very far with it. And if you can't have compassion on somebody, you can't do anything for them anyway. God's calling us to stand up and just try it. When you start interacting with people, let, let the Word all of a sudden come in. Whatever you're talking about, whatever you're discussing, all of a sudden let the Word be a, be a regular a regular communication between the church people again. In between God's people, the lines of communication. Let me tell you something, friend. I will never, Sister Jeanette, you know, in in you talking about different ones, how that, you know, we can see somebody. They might have went through something bad in their in their day, or they might have went through something that was that might have been bad news or whatever. And all of a sudden you 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 see somebody and, and the devil puts up a, a thought in your mind. Well that they gave me a funny look. They just didn't seem like uh, they were their, their self today. And all of a sudden, the devil gets in your mind. And before you know it, he's already brought division. And before you know it, I, I'm telling you just from the pastor of a church, before you know it, there can be sides divided and you didn't even know there was a problem. Amen. <laughs> the only ones that can stop the enemy for gaining a foothold in here is us. That's right. That's right. It's us. It's us. Change the narrative. Change the narrative. Change your outlook. Change the way you see things. Lord. I know this is a scary thought, but let me see this world through your eyes. Can I tell you something? There's a lot of hurting people in this world. There's a lot of sick people in this world. But those, those two things can be helped. Because if we can get to eternity, everything else will be taken care of. But what the world needs is the church to take the message of the cross back to her again. What the world needs is the church to proclaim once again the message that God has given to us to, to proclaim. And that is that we're just here for a short time. Man sinned. Woman sinned. Humanity fell. But there was a plan even before we were ever made from the foundation of the world because Jesus was that lamb that was slain from the very foundation of the world. And we see the plan of salvation beginning to be unfolded before our eyes. And folks, it's never changed. The plan of God has never changed. He wants people to spend eternity with Him. Yes. Everything leading up to that is the process of God getting us to where He wants us to be. 
And by one man, Adam, sin came into the world. By the second Adam, Jesus Christ, sin was removed from the world. You think of this, the Bible says even the earth cries out for Jesus to come back because the earth was cursed at the same time that men and women were cursed. The earth was cursed. And it says that the earth cries out for the coming of the Lord. Yes. That's a powerful scripture. Yes. Whew. The whole earth is groaning in turmoil. And listen, folks. So that just means it's not only in the people's lives, it's in the earth. That's right. Stuff we're having to fight with right now, stuff we're having to come against right now, it's all a fight against a spiritual adversary. It's time to change the narrative. <coughs> change the narrative. There was a Something that Rhonda's daddy showed me a long time ago, and I'll have to tell her all the things he knows about it yet. But he'd go around the house, and he'd start singing a song. And before he, long, he would sing that song lightly, and all of a sudden her and her sister and her mother would be singing the song. And he said it's really helpful whenever you're kind of discussing something that's kind of important and it's not going your way. <laughs> start humming a song. That's a great idea. And I started paying attention to that. You know, that really works. And so, anyway, so, I, so I'm thinking to myself, that, that that's pretty good, but it doesn't matter. It eventually goes back there. So it just kind of buys you a little bit of time. <laughs> But what I've learned is, and I'm not trying to say I need to change her. What I'm trying to change, what I'm trying to say is, if I can make her in a good mood, <laughs> you can sure enough paddle downstream a lot better than you can go upstream. So I have to change the narrative. And, and like I said, that's not nothing to do with her. That's me. That's the way I'm presenting myself whenever I come in. Because I can tell you this, what you do within the first five minutes you come home is going to determine how your night is going to go and whether you're going to talk, talk to anybody for the rest of the night or whether you're going to sit quietly in your room by yourself because you done ticked everybody off in the house. It happens within the first five minutes of you getting home. And I'm going to tell you something, folks. Be careful when you drove a long way and you're about to get a home and you're about to talk to your family or you're about to talk to your spouse. Be careful what you get engaged in before you have time to, to, to go the right direction or to allow God to lead you through that minefield, if you want to say. <laughs> Lord, help me change the narrative. You know what? If God says that bean field over there, David said, that's my bean field. Don't let anybody come in and get it. And one of David, my, David's mighty men stood there and protected a dried up old bean field because the king said, do it. It don't matter. God might send me, send me through a minefield tomorrow, and I'm talking about physically or spiritual, but it doesn't matter where He sends me that I go. He'll either protect me or He'll take me home. But whatever that is, I've got to change the narrative. I just, can't, I, I just can't stand here. I just can't stand still. I've got to move forward. Idleness is not a good thing, folks. Idleness is not a good thing. That's why the Lord told us to keep busy. Because if we don't have anything to do, you know what we do? We start looking at one another. Yes. And you know what, Brother Butch, I found out today? I can pick out sermons that need to be preached at you 
you better than I can me. I'm telling you what I learned, brother. <laughs> I was listening to it. I was listening to a message this morning. And that's what I was getting out of it. Lord, don't let me just hear with my ears. Let me hear with my heart. Yes, amen. Change the narrative. I don't even know where change the narrative came, came from. I just kind of said that, but I don't know. We just have to we just have to take back that that God has given to us. And the enemy, if he's coming and taking it, we got to go get it back. If he didn't, we're going to prepare for whenever he tries to because he's not getting it because God promised it to me. Right now, there's promises for you that are in this sanctuary right now. There's promises that you've been holding on to. Promises that you know that God has spoke. That that's a promise that God has given to you. And you need to take that promise and you need to hide it within your heart. And you need to have faith for what God has spoken in your life. And then begin to walk out what God has promised you. And begin to walk out the, the blessings of God. Father, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we're so thankful today for Your many blessings, God. 